Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dichronic, you're here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're taking a look at my top 10 PD heavies in Destiny 2 Season of the Witch. And of course, as always, I have made a spreadsheet for this video with all the colors, recommendations, links, and of course, DPS testing, which can still be found at my Discord server, linked in the description down below, on the channel, hashtag Spreadsheets Docs. And of course, these videos and spreadsheets do take quite some time to complete, and it is supported by my patrons on Patreon. So if you like these spreadsheets and you want to see them continue, Check out my Patreon, because without your help, I probably will have to stop doing them soon. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. On screen right now, this is my spreadsheet. Again, dark theme, color-coded recommendations for the different perk options, as well as rankings, and on the right side, the DPS calculations. Keeping in mind that uh, DPS is not everything. Although this is organized by DPS, DPS does not mean you're number one. It is often a factor of DPS, full ammo damage, how easy it is to use, whether it's a crit versus a not crit weapon, it has special perks like auto loading or barrier rounds, how much ammo economy it has, whether it's an exotic or legendary, lots of factors go into it. Moving on to get started, first up at number 10, we have the Adaptive Frame Grenade Launchers. And hold on before you start riding with your pitchforks, because this is actually a much better option than people give you credit for. Especially when you get the nice perk with Explosive Light, or Full Cord, or even Bait and Switch, which is on the Cataphract, which is unfortunately a Trials weapon, you get some pretty good damage. Some of the highest DPS in the game, even more than that of Galahorn, and really good full ammo damage, which is, again, even more than that of Galahorn. However, obviously, it doesn't get the Wolfpack rounds that Galahorn gives, which often gives you like 40 to 50% more damage. So Galahorn and Rockets are definitely still the meta, which we'll see much later on, but the legendary grenade launchers end up doing fairly well. However, I do find that I run out of ammo with them pretty darn quickly, and, you know, Rockets pick up like one to three Rockets per pickup, and grenade launchers definitely pick up a smaller percentage of their total. And in case you're wondering, the 150 Rapid Fires are just worse in every way. They do less damage per shot, they have worse DPS and full ammo damage, and they have a smaller blast radius. They're just worthless. When it comes to where you get them, there's a lot of great ones everywhere. The Wendigo GL3 is from the Uniques on Vanguard. You can literally buy some from Zavala. The Typhon is a world drop. You can get a lot from the Banshee. I think Interference is also a world drop. I've had a spike plus full court for quite some time with it. Following that at number 9, we have the Two-Tailed Fox. And if you haven't seen this one much, it's because, well, obviously Galhorn exists and doesn't work on the exotics, but this thing does some really good DPS and even higher full ammo damage than Galhorn by a pretty significant margin, especially if you have the Catalyst, which adds a third arc rocket that does jolting to it, which is like, oh, just a free 50% more damage? That's crazy. <laughs> And so if you do end up playing without a Galahorn on your team, or nobody has Galahorn or the 30th anniversary, you're playing solo play, Two-Tailed Fox is an excellent option for, again, full ammo damage out of a rocket launcher and pretty high DPS. And the only reason you don't see more of it is because Galahorn exists, and it gives wolf packs to your whole team of legendary rockets. Following that at number 8, we have the King of Swords, the Lament, which, again, in my opinion, is the best sword in the game for PvE. That being said, the quest with Surrounded is definitely a more continuous damage option, and for Crota ends up being a better option if you can maintain Surrounded. That being said, you have to get the quest, you have to get it with Surrounded, you have to get the Jagged Edge and all those combinations, or get it to be craftable, get those enhanced perks, and get that whole thing Surrounded. And the Lament can just do it with its Banshee's Whale combo that also heals you from its attacks, also has barrier rounds, also has a higher than average impact value, which is the same as Bequest, by the way. If you didn't know, Bequest for some reason has a higher impact value than all the other adaptive swords in the game. I still think Lament is going to be the best sword option in the game, and it is especially useful against Crota on the actual Crota boss fight because you put the well down and you do a lot of great damage. And on top of that, obviously, swords have some of the highest full ammo damage in the game. 2.6 million, it's whew, really freaking high. So TLDR, if you have the ability to safely damage a boss with a sword in melee range, Lament's going to be one of the best options in the game. Because let me tell you, the ability to heal through damage with the Banshee's Whale stuff on top of the incredible damage you can deal is really strong. And if you want to get your hands on it, I believe it is an exotic quest from Beyond Light, which means anybody can get it if you have Beyond Light. Following that at number 7, we have the Heavy Linear Fusion Rifles. More specifically, the Aggressive 3 Bursts are going to be at 7A and the Precisions at 7B. And if you haven't used Linear Fusion Rifles much, they have a lot of things going for them. First of all, they can be used at any range, making them a decently safe 
safe option. Secondly, they have very high full ammo damage compared to a lot of other options around it, although not as much as heavy machine guns. And with that, they also have a 4 times crit multiplier. So the better you get at the game, the much better these things actually perform. And if you don't know, on my spreadsheet, I actually have a crit percentage, which identifies how accurate I believe the weapon to be, on average. Where the aggressive frame free bursts are probably going to be getting less headshots than that of the precision as a percentage of their total. However, if you have something like Divinity, it turns these slightly less accurate aggressive frames into an insane damage option. So on Iryut, we often do linear fusion rifle, with Divinity. These things are pumping out damage. And with that, they also have great full ammo damage. So when you finally run out of ammo, you know you've done a ton of damage to the target. And when it comes to the different options, we have Storm Chaser, which I believe drops from the Duality Dungeon, although not a craftable option, can get Firing Line. We have Fire and Forget, which is the Seraph set of weapons. You can get it from Exotic Missions right now, whenever it's the Seraph set. And this one is craftable. And technically, Vice Singer did get nerfed, but it still has a lot of great combos like Joe Clip or Focus Fury. And one of the fan favorites, we have Briar's Contempt, which is one of the Root of Nightmares options, and it has Reconstruction plus Focus Fury or Frenzy, making it a great option. Following that at number six is, again, another fan favorite we have the xenophage which is a heavy machine gun with giant explosive rounds that feels a lot more like an automatic rail gun and this particular weapon has really high dps you can see literally at row nine at the nearly the top of the list has really good full ammo damage more than that of galahorn at 1.4 million and it's also really easy to use at any range and you can't hurt yourself with it which is like why isn't it higher on the list well technically this damage is against non-bosses if you don't know xenophage does like 30% less damage to bosses, making it a lot less effective as a heavy weapon because that's what you're using heavy weapons for. But that being said, it's still really fun, really great, and 30% less than this is still a great option. Although in my opinion, not the best heavy ammo option and definitely not the best heavy machine gun option. And one of the best parts about this is that it's fairly easy to get. I believe there's a Shadow Keep exotic quest, or you can get it from the archive. It's pretty straightforward. Following that at number five, we have the legendary 450 and 900 RPM heavy machine guns. And whoo-hoo! I use these things a lot. They're essentially my default option for almost everything that I do. And the reason is because they have really high full ammo damage. At 2.4 million, the Song of Yuyu and Bait and Switch is one of the highest in the entire game. And even the base models at 1.7 million is really good to have with absolutely no perks on them. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, total ammo damage often ends up being more important than DPS in a lot of different scenarios. And when it comes down to the two, the 450s probably have a bit more of a lead on the 900s, because if you look at it, better full ammo damage and about the same base DPS, but the 900s do feel better at close range, and Retrofit with its fourth times a charm target lock definitely shreds enemies, and of course, with Gear Falcon and the Void stuff, Commemoration and Retrofit absolutely just shatter enemies. That being said, their DPS is obviously not nearly as high as a lot of the rocket launchers and the top of the list options, and they do require sustain, making them a vulnerable option to use if you're doing it in the high level. But oftentimes it is still worth it because they do so much full ammo damage option. I... <laughs> they do so much option! Yeah! <laughs> And there's a lot of great options that are readily available. My personal favorite right now is going to be Commemoration, which is craftable from DSC. Again, we have the Retrofit, which was from the Seraph DLC, which you can now get from the Exotic Missions. Some easy ones to get right now, probably Circular Logic, which drops from the new Muna public event thing. Song of Your Yut right now, also a great option with Bait and Switch, which I just recently got from the Crota Raid. Essentially, you want to have a 450 or 900 RPM with some kind of mag perk like 4th times a charm or auto loading, plus some kind of damage perk like Target Lock or bait and switch and you've got yourself a fantastic option oh actually uh, electric principle right now has target lock so you can actually craft that and make that this easy and i think this is from the witch activity stuff so pretty easy to get moving on after that at number four we have the grand overture in my opinion an extremely underrated option because it's just so annoying to use but would you believe me if i told you this particular weapon not only has the highest dps in the entire game with the missile options it also has the highest full ammo damage of any option in this game like look 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 at this this is the dps of grand overture look at that graph going out when you look at this damage you can see that's again grand overture so why isn't it number one because it's annoying to use that weird charge thing where you're accidentally shooting shots into the wall the travel time of the shots the requirement of sustain on the enemy and the slow fire rate usually throws it off and of course if you die you do lose the missiles that you have so there's a lot of little clunkiness to this weapon but if you get used to it oh my god the dps output and total ammo damage is incredible 
and it does have a catalyst where the missiles will blind targets but again it's one of the highest dps options in the game if you're not murdering an enemy with your missiles you're doing something wrong <laughs> although you can just pop out like one missile blind a target and stun i think an unstop champion so there's that too However, following that at number three, in my opinion, the best heavy machine gun in the game, we have the Thunderlord. And my god, this weapon is fun to use. If you've never used it before, it's a heavy machine gun, which I think has a quest for it, but it's also a world drop. Uh, where you hold down the trigger, it starts to fire faster, which means much better DPS. Creates lightning strikes on the target as you continue to hit targets, creating AoE extra damage. And with the catalyst, those lightning strikes put ammo back into your magazine, allowing you to use like three-fifths of the total ammo without having to reload. With Axiom, you probably could go the whole thing. It also has overload rounds built into it, even without the current artifact bonus. And it also has pretty decent full ammo damage, although not as much as a lot of the legendary options at 1.5 million, it's still really good. And at nearly 70,000 DPS, comparing to like Galahorn's like 90,000, that's really good. Sometimes I end up just using Thunderlord on Root of Nightmares because I'm like, ah. I don't want to deal with the whole Gallahorn thing. Let's just put a div on the target and go nuts. Gallahorn is so fun, so easy to use. It's applicable in nearly every scenario. It's the king of heavy machine guns. And I was very tempted to put some heavy machine guns at number one, but I do think the rocket stuff are definitely going to be superior. Let's get into it. So following that at number two, we have the legendary heavy machine guns. More specifically, the adaptives and the aggressive frames, because they have a higher damage profile. If you don't know, certain rocket types do more than others, which you can see on screen. And my personal favorite gonna be Apex Predator and Cold Comfort, because they have bait and switch, which if you haven't noticed already, bait and switch is like the best damage perk in the game. It gives you 35% more damage for 10 seconds after getting a shot on target with the other two weapons that you have. That is incredibly high. I think even if they nerf this down to 25% for 8 seconds, I would still use it. Although there are a lot of other good perks as well. You can get Red Herring with the Golden Tricorn situation. You can get Explosive Light, Chill Clip, Lasting Impressions, any of these things that do a lot more damage. And of course, the reason why we use these rockets is because they do pretty high DPS, somewhat below average full ammo damage, but you combine that up with the Wolfpack rounds that Galahorn gives you, and you're doing like 40 to 50% more damage with those legendaries just by having one Galahorn on the team, making them an incredibly competitive option for pretty much everything. The only thing it doesn't do is full ammo damage, so if you have a target with a ton of health or a lot of damage gates, rockets will slightly lose out, but still definitely king of the meta. And my personal favorite right now is going to be Apex Predator, which comes from Last Wish Raid, which I have uh, crafted with Reconstruction plus Bait and Switch, which Reconstruction on rockets is unfair. Like, auto-loading in your pocket, it's like, it takes two seconds to auto-load one shot. Reconstruction, whether it's in your hand or not, takes like 2.5 to 3 seconds, and it can go up to 2, which is ridiculous. It shouldn't be how it is, but it is. Otherwise, we have Cold Comfort from the Ghost of the Deep Dungeon, we have Blowout uh, from Crucible, we have Hothead from the Nightfall Pool, a lot of great stuff. However, following that at number one, we have the Galahorn, which is literally the glue that holds everything together. Because if we didn't have Galahorn, rockets would not be on top. Because the ability to give all of your legendary counterpart teammates wolf pack rounds, again, making them do 40 to 50% more damage is insane. And just by itself, Galahorn has some of the highest DPS in the game. Oh, actually, 75,000, my mistake and a million full ammo damage is ridiculous. It's just generally a weapon that's fun to use no matter what you're doing. And with the Catalyst, you get two in the tube, making the DPS a lot higher than the other legendary options. And you also have the little wolf pack round seeker things, where you get a kill with your wolf pack rounds, they create bigger wolf pack rounds, but again, most of the time, you're gonna be using this for DPS. And with that, it also has built-in tracking and also proximity explosion horseshoes and hand grenades. It's just the best rocket in almost every way. And the only reason other rockets would ever be better is if there's a Galahorn on the team, which is why you need a Galahorn on the team. And of course, I know what you're probably thinking, you have to actually have purchased the 30th anniversary to be able to get the Galahorn, and that's true. But you don't have to get it, because if you have one person who bought it, then the rest of you use the legendary, which is a great thing. And lastly, when you pull that thing out, it makes a growling sound, just like a lion, which I think is an amazing touch for an amazing weapon. And of course, I want to give a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, a big thank you to Mom and Dad, Caper Shaw, Wafar, and Prez, Joe Batten, Rob Strayer, James Ostler, Ethan Hodges, Monty Armstrong, Monday, Steve Bachman, Mr. Juno Panther, Casey Reagan, William Peterson, Benjamin, and Sam Galaxy for the support on Patreon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have a fantastic day. My name is Zychronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.